Treasury yields tumbling today. The benchmark 10-year Treasury trading around two-week lows on fears the Fed could cause a recession. CNBC on-air editor Rick Santelli is following the action for this Chicago CME. Rick, it's always great to see you, particularly on Fast Money. Um, and it just seems like the, the volatility that we've seen in the bond market seems extraordinary. I don't know, can you put it into context? And why do you think we're seeing such whipsaw swings in yields? Well, I think one of the main reasons of late is not only the recession talk domestically, but globally. And sticking to that global premise, I do believe that Europe in a large part, especially Germany after the 14th, when the big valve of the gas, nat gas from Putin, starts to get cranked a little tighter, is really almost leading the market. And, and I'll tell you what I mean. Okay, now let's look at a couple charts. Here's a three-day chart of two-year no yields. And obviously you can see we've lost a lot of ground. The more recessionary talk we hear globally, the more rates are going down and a flight to safety for good credit. You see the same thing with a 10-year. But here's where it gets interesting. Yes, the chairman talked in front of both sides of the aisle the last 36 hours. And as much as he was hawkish, look at boom yields. Okay, this is boom yields today. Long before the chairman took his microphone, they moved from 165 down into the 140s. And I think that's key because I think all of a sudden we are starting to see many of the uh, issues in Europe come home to roost in the marketplace. And that's having an effect on us. You could see it in the boom 10-year spread. And finally, it's not only having an effect on us, as hawkish as the chairman was, Look at these Fed fund futures for the last three days. They're up 22 ticks from their low closing yield. That means less Fed in the marketplace, and the market gets what it wants. Rick, not that I want to necessarily do this to you, although I really do. And I'm, I'm <laughs> loving the fact that you're here, and I'm going to wind you up. I thought one of the many mandates of uh, the Federal Reserve were stable prices. When 10-year yields move 48 basis points in effectively three and a half, four days, that's anything but stable. And that's not anecdotal. That's been going on for the last year and a half. So I don't know where they want stability because it's clearly not in the bond market, which should be the most liquid asset on the planet. I couldn't agree more. And I'll take it a step farther since you did wind me up a bit. You know, many <laughs> believe that the, the chairman was very frank and hawkish the last couple of days. But in a way, he got under my skin, especially when they asked what he thought about some of the fiscal policies and legislation past, present, and future. And he basically said, hey, I stick to my own knitting here, which really goes against the grain of what he said from about March 2020 to the end or mid-2021 when he was in essence begging for more fiscal additives inside the economy. I guess what I'm getting at here is the market is unmoored for a very good reason, because policy was unmoored and the Fed was the enabler. You can't spend too much money. You can't print too much money unless, of course, the Fed condones some of the big spending policies of the administration. Eric, it's Karen. Thanks for being on. Uh, this probably won't wind you up, but I'll ask it anyway. The tightening, that the, the QT part of it, we haven't fully seen that in full effect yet. How much do you think that will destabilize the markets? The bond markets. Well, I think it will. Yeah, I think it's going to. And I think that the bond market ride's going to stay volatile. But I think at the end of the day, the end of the day, I see inflation in many ways has peaked. Commodity inflation, in my opinion, already peaked. The issue isn't whether it peaks. I think that's going to be a war of words down the road. The issue is the rate of change may go to zero, but prices most likely in many of the stickiest parts of the inflationary areas are going to remain very sticky. And what looks like inflation hasn't kept up with respect to or wages haven't kept up to inflation. Ultimately, wages are going to be sticky even when inflation starts to come down. And that's going to create the next headache for the Fed. Rick, thank you so much. Great to see you. Thanks, Melissa. Rick Santelli joining us from Chicago. Well, bond yields may have been down today, but stocks were up. The Nasdaq rising about a percent and a half. Long term, though, and I don't know if you want to call it a game mm. or not a game, but oh. we're going to ask this question. Are falling bond yields and bond yields that are falling this precipitously uh -huh. good or bad for stocks? Karen, what do you think? I think good. To the mm -hmm. extent that bond yields are falling because inflation is coming down and to the extent that inflation going up was, we saw what that did, the reversal of that, I think, to me, good. Okay, yeah, green thumbs up.
Do you think that yeah. bond yields are falling now because inflation is coming down? I think there is the perception that inflation oh. is peaking. Right. And we've seen, I mean, we talk about, you know, the different commodities. Tim talks about the, just yesterday, all the commodities, lumber and um, I think copper and mm -hmm. gas, oil. Right. All, all of those it. seem to have turned at the moment. Tim, what do you say then? Well, I, I feel like you changed the game on me as you as you Why? said long term. I don't remember if that was part of the question that was asked originally. But anyway, I'll, I'll answer the question and I'll say bad. Um, I think ultimately we know that the first derivative or the first brain cell. Ooh, yes, um, is is that it, it really is a sign today of EU PMIs that were back to COVID lows. EU, uh, sorry, U.S. Uh, manufacturing this morning, 52.1. Uh, you know, you're not too far away from contraction. The manufacturing portion of that was lower. Uh, we've gotten data points over the last three weeks. Um, so, uh, you know, this is rates going lower because people are more concerned about the economy. Let's be clear. Um, Fed funds rate went from 370 down to 340. Um, but ultimately, that is good for stocks, right? So I'm not going to hedge my answer. I'm going to say negative. Uh, but I do think that yields going down and Karen mentioned inflation. Um, that's a good reason. But ultimately, we're going down right now because people are worried about the economy. Yeah. So since we're all playing choose your own adventure, so why <laughs> should I be any different? I think in the short term, it's going to be good. And I think if you want, again, anecdotal evidence, uh, today is everything you need to know. Look at the outperformance of the Nasdaq, mm -hmm. theoretically the most interest rate sensitive names. And I think that's going to continue for the foreseeable future, meaning the next three or four weeks. Long term, I think it's really bad that rates are going down because it speaks to a significant slowdown and earnings are going to take a bath on the back of that, Melms. ARC was up 7% today, so good for certain parts of the market in a big way. Uh, Dan? Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, if you look at the 10 year U.S. Treasury yield over the last 40 years, but let's just focus on 2020, you know, we, it was above 6% in the year 2000. Um, when we topped out in 2007, it was lower than that. When we topped out in 2018, it was three and a quarter percent. We just topped out. You know, my, my point is rates are never going up meaningfully, and, and, you know, unless the sovereigns around the globe are able to reduce the size of their balance sheets because they can't service all this debt. So we just had this spike from basically zero to three and a half percent in the 10 year or whatever we were 50 bips at the low and I suspect it comes back down into trend right. and that's fine for stocks.